Welcome back to the GCN Tech Clinic. And I'm sure you all know the drill by now, what it's all about. But if you don't, here's a little reminder. So if you've got yourself a bike related problem, so something's not working, something's annoying you, you wanna know how something works possibly, leave that question for me down there in the comment section below. And I'll try and answer it in an upcoming episode. And sometimes you even get your question answered by a fellow member of the tech community, which I think is pretty cool really, that we've got people who are willing to help another one out. Right. Let's crack on. The first one in this week comes from the Belly 925. Now the Belly says, uh, can I highlight the differences between a direct mount rear derailleur system and the standard mounting system that commercial systems have installed? Right, okay, so I reckon you mean by that with a, a direct mount rear derailleur hanger. So uh, with those shadow style rear mechs that you get on 105, Dura Ace and Ultegra, you've got a linkage piece, I guess, that you can remove and you can just clamp the rear derailleur straight onto the, the mech hanger instead of screwing it into the thread, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Um, firstly, a reduction of weight slightly. Uh, it's said also to give a slightly uh, improved gear shift because you've removed obviously a link off that and it's a bit closer into the cassette. Uh, now some riders, they reckon it gives you, you know, this crispier gear shift and have really wanted that direct mount hanger. So I remember Dylan Grunewagen, his bike at the Tour of Dubai, the Dubai Tour last year, back in 2018, he actually had a custom one on his bike. I remember spotting that. Um, now a real benefit of this system as well is that it means the rear mech is slightly further back, meaning wheel changes are faster. So in the Pro Peloton, that, can make a huge difference because of course time is not necessarily on their side and they have to change a wheel at the side of the road. That's probably uh, about it really. I mean, if you look compared to an older style rear mech with those shadow ones, the rear mech is in slightly further. It's about 13 millimeters further in. So I guess you could say it's more aerodynamic and it's more out of harm's way, if you like. Next up is Simon Says. Simon Says. Answer the questions, that's what I'm gonna do. Right, uh, hello John, most likely John. I absolutely love all GCN tech videos and I got soaked into bike tech so much that I'm building my own bike from scratch. That's good news. I love that how people get so involved in it. That's what I did, made a mistake one day, some uh, school holidays, about 1994, ruined a wheel. Dad came home from work, told me off. I learned how to build wheels the next day. Uh, I have a question regarding bottom brackets, Simon does. Uh, they got themselves a Shimano BBR60, uh, installed it according to all the tips they found on the tech channel, including a torque wrench. Uh, also in installed the crank set. Wanted to do a free spin test, so no chain fitted to it. All just span those cranks. Uh, it made maybe two revolutions and stops. When I rotate it with my finger, the whole work of it, so the, the, the bearings and everything, is nice and smooth. Feels no resistance, yet it does not spin as long as I was expecting it to. Uh, with you know, with a crank that without a chain on it should, basically. Uh, is this normal? And I was simply misled by information I found, or maybe something is not right. Later on, I found some information that brand new bottom brackets may be like this and get better after the first few kilometers. But now I don't know which information is correct. Please help. Simon, don't worry, okay? Now, nearly all bottom brackets out there will spin like this. The old cup and cone ones were quite good because you could manipulate what was happening inside of it. So you could remove grease or you could add just a very small amount uh, and you could get them to spin for quite a while. But sealed units like the BBR60 you've got on there, are sealed so all the, the bearings and the grease are all in there behind these fancy seals and you can't access it that much. If you were to wash out all the grease, yeah, it would spin for a bit longer, but also it wouldn't last very long because the bearings would start to pit against the, uh, the cups of the inside. You don't need to worry about it, okay? I don't reckon you're going for the hour record and that's not in a, a disrespectful way at all or anything, but this sort of friction, you are very, very unlikely to feel it through your through your feet or through the pedals while you're pedaling away. And it will most likely become um, less, less viscous, I, I guess you could call it, the grease. Uh, it will start to, to wear a little bit thinner. Uh, ultimately, it will become harder again when you stop, but the heat generated by the cranks turning around in that bottom bracket the, the, the grease turns into a more liquid form, therefore it's easier to go around. So the spin test like that isn't that great. If you were to do that in a really hot climate or in an oven or something, it would probably spin a bit further around. Now, you've probably uh, got the idea it will keep spinning for ages because of ceramic bottom bracket bearings or ceramic bearings that tend to spin a little bit freer. They don't use grease inside of them, no lubricant or anything. They just work on the sort of hard surfaces in there. They're very tough. I think ceramic bearings, the ball bearings are like 10 times tougher, I think, than a steel bearing, something like that. Um, 
I'm not going to go into the can of worms though that ceramic bearings are because that will create a whole different debate down below. I know half of you are probably already typing this, but don't worry about it. If you want really free spinning cranks right from the off, then yeah, you can go ahead and buy something that will do that, but it is going to hit you pretty hard in your wallet, I've got to say. Next up is Gabriel Evangelista, who says, uh, John, I need help ASAP. Right, I hope. Hopefully I'm in time. Uh, I have a Shimano 105 wheel set, but it has a problem on the free hub. It just spins and spins and spins when I pedal it. What could be the possible issue? I brought it to our local bike shop, but they can't fix it. They can't open the free hub because they say it has a special tool to open it up. They say maybe it is the pulls. Can I still fix that? Thanks for the answers. Gabriel, Gabriel. The uh, spinning free hub, absolute nightmare when this happens because some free hubs are not user serviceable and the Shimano ones, they're, they're not intended basically to be, to be taken apart. Not very many shops out there do in fact have those tools to be able to split them, open them and have a look at the inner workings. Instead, Shimano, they just advise to get a replacement free hub on there. But, okay, what you could do before going out and spending, I don't know, whatever they are, 15, 20 pounds, depends on what, what free hub you've got. Well, you've got 105, so probably a little bit more than that. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to take the axle out because you're gonna to have to do that anyway if you are gonna get a new free hub. But you could be able to rejuvenate this one temporarily and who knows, it maybe last you a long time. So get the axle out. Uh, you need then a hex wrench. I think it's an 11 or a 12, might even be a 10. It's a while since I've done it and it does vary from model to model. Get it inside of the free hub, release that from the uh, from the actual hub shell because it tightens into it. It's got a, quite a big, big beefy old bolt in there. Take that free hub off. Now on the back of it, most likely you're gonna have a little rubber seal on the back. Prise it off gently, really, really gently. Uh, do it over a, a cloth or a towel or something like that, or some, some, some paper. Now underneath that seal, that rubber seal, prise it off, there are some ball bearings in there. Now they may be loose, they may, may be in a retainer, or again, it all does depend. Um, Spray that with some, some lubricant, you know, WD-40, whatever, just try and spray it. And also, at the same time, when, once you've sprayed it in there, try and spin the free hub on itself. So put your fingers inside of it, hold it like that, and then turn it around and try and work that lubricant in. And who knows, it may be, it could just free up some of the grit and grime that was in there and has caused that sticking. Failing that, you probably need a new free hub, but before you go out and do this, what you could do is put it in a, a small little bath of oil, like engine oil, I've done this before with a free hub. I've left it in there for a couple of days. I know your question, you said, you know, you need help ASAP, but I like to try and bring old things back to life. So put it in there for a couple of days, but say, I don't know, after the first few hours, take it out, of course, wearing some protective gloves, and just try and spin it. See if it makes any difference. See if it does lock and engage like a free hub should. If not, put it back in there after a couple of days. If it's not gonna, it's gonna flush everything out and you know bring it back to life, then yeah, you are gonna need to buy a new one. But I try and do that first, really, because it's good to try and, well, yeah, try and make use of something for just a little bit longer. Right, now we've got Phil Watson, who says, Hi, John, I have a 10-speed 105 group set. Can I add a GRX 400 rear mech for my cross bike? Also, using a mech extender, could I push the GRX 400 limit to 40 teeth? Right. Yeah, the uh, GRX 400 is one of the gravel series, you know, the Shimano's group sets. Uh, GRX 400 is the 10 speed version of the rear derailleur. So that's gonna work absolutely fine with your 10 speed 105 group set. Uh, the shifting uh, ratio of how much cable it pulls is gonna be perfect. In fact, this is what I did on that garbage to gravel bike I did. I got a, uh, a pair of old 105 10 speed shifters, matched them up with that GRX 400 rear mech, worked absolutely spot on. Now you said as well about putting in a derailleur hanger extender and seeing if a 40 tooth cassette will work fine. So I use on a previous uh, one by hack video, you may well remember that one, where I convert an old frame I had laying around as well into one by. Put a mech hanger on there, uh, put a short cage rear derailleur on there, and I think I got it to work with a 38 tooth cassette on there, fine. That was a short cage one, like a real road race machine, whereas that GRX is gonna have a slightly longer cage on there and it should be absolutely fine. You may need to play around a little bit with the uh, the B tension screw adjustment there. It goes on the back of the rear derailleur hanger, but I see no problems at all with that. Good luck. And the final one this week, a pretty complicated one, I reckon. Toby Price, hi John, nice chatting to you outside the Kdex pop-up shop in Harrogate during the Worlds. Now I'm hoping you can help. I remember that, Toby. It was chucking it down with rain and it was about five past seven in the morning and you were wondering what on earth I was doing out. 
Uh, anyway, right, Toby, your question. I have a giant boulder Alulite MTB from 1999, and I was wondering if it's convertible to a gravel bike. Right, this one's gonna be a, a bit complex, I reckon. Uh, it's got Tetro Direct Mount Cycle Brakes, so V-Brakes, and Shimano mountain bike gear levers connected to an Alta 7-speed rear mech and Shimano Tourne uh, triple front derailleur, so dual pull as well, so presumably that means it can be pulled from the bottom as well, or the top, depending on the cable routing. Very versatile bit of kit, that. Uh, how easy is it gonna be to find road bike brake gear levers that will work with this setup, or am I dreaming? I think you might be. Uh, if it's not feasible, any suggestions for the cheapest way to convert it? Thanks, Toby. P.S. How about a GCN tech show about all those tools behind you and what they're all for? Well, there's gonna be more than one show, I reckon. We've got masses over there you can't even see. Trust me. Um, right, okay, I love your thinking about this. You've, you've got yourself your old mountain bike thinking, this bad boy needs to go out and enjoy itself. But you've got seven speed uh, derailleurs, okay? You're not going to be able to get a seven-speed road STI or Ergo or uh, SRAM, you know, a shifter or anything like that. That's going to work with it because they don't exist. They came out in eight-speed. So what you're going to have to do is go back to the drawing board. You're going to have to get your wallet out, I'm afraid, with this one. What I would advise with this: get yourself one of those GRX 400 rear derailleurs I already mentioned, and a pair of Shimano 105 or anything 10-speed, any 10-speed Shimano um, gear shifters, you know, STI levers. Pair that up and get rid of the triple chain set as well because you're not trying to get a triple STI lever, not necessarily that easy either. Uh, or you could just go one by even. You don't, it won't cost you as much. But you're also then going to get to have to buy a new rear wheel as well because a seven speaker set or overlock nut distance is narrower than a uh, 10 speed one which is what I'm trying to get you to go towards because you're going to have way more gearing options seven speed you're not really going to enjoy that off-road that much um, just thinking about what else you've asked in here I mean the brakes they will work okay with uh, STI levers or any any um, drop bar brake levers providing you get I think it's called a travel adapter so it goes on to the um, just where the where the cable goes into the, the noodle if you like I think that's what they call it the, the v-brake noodle it goes in there and it adjusts the amount of pull you get for each uh, stroke of the lever and it adjusts it accordingly because v-brakes because the linear pull they work differently to a standard uh, caliper brake Essentially, you are going to have to spend a little bit of money on this. Um, have a look at my garbage to gravel video, and that will probably give you some pretty good inspiration on exactly what to do there. But trying to get seven speed uh, drop bar, drop handlebar shifters, yeah, it's not it's not going to work, my friend. You could get, I suppose, a, a uh, old cyclocross or bar end shifter, put that in friction mode. That would work absolutely fine. But that's it, really. Let me know next time I see you how you get on, or do you know what? Just send me a message and uh, I can discuss with you in more detail exactly what I'd really go for. Right, I hope I've been able to help answer and solve your problem this week. If not, leave it for me down there in the comment section and I'll do my utmost best to try and solve it in a very future episode. Uh, right, remember as well, like to share this video with your friends. Don't forget also, check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com for two more cracking videos. Click just down here and just down here and I'll see you soon.